Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was asked about his deleted tweet in support of Roger Waters' controversial anti-Nazi protest last week. Let's watch that. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, um, a lot of people are confused about the tweet storm. I call it the tweet heard around the world. A couple of tweets were put up in support of Roger Waters and then taken down. Do you want to give us a little explanation of why they were taken down and also your stance on Israel and Palestine? Yeah, I, uh, I tweeted that, uh, I made the tweet applauding Ro Roger Waters' courage in opposing the COVID mandates and the, um, and the Ukraine war. I did not, I was unaware of his position on Israel. And when I learned that, I, I immediately took it down. My position of Israel is that I support Israel. I support, my family has a long relationship with Israel. I support its right to exist and its right to protect its security. And the Palestinians? And, and a, a humane outcome and a recognition ultimately of the aspirations of the Palestinian people is important for everybody. You got a lot of pushback for that response. Kennedy was also asked about his stance on Cuba. Mr. Kennedy, recently on an interview, you said that your uncle has more streets named after him in Latin America than any other president that's uh, held office. What is your position on Cuba? Are you willing to block, uh, to get rid of the blockade on day one? Yes. Joining us now to weigh in is our rising panel. Max Blumenthal is editor at The Gray Zone, and Joel Rubin is partner at Democracy, uh, Democracy Partners. Welcome to Rising to both of you. Good to see you. Thanks so much, Bree. All right, I'll start with you, Max. As I'm sure you're aware, a lot of the left was critical of his statements on several levels. First and foremost, do you think it's credible that RFK Jr. didn't realize what he was offering Roger Waters support for when Roger Waters, of course, was embroiled in a controversy about his choice to have a satirical anti-fascist costume during his concert that was reminiscent of a Nazi armband? If, if that is why everyone was talking about Roger Waters and which what led to RFK Jr.'s support of Roger Waters on Twitter that was later retracted, what do you make of his recharacterization of why he supported him and his generalized comments there on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Yeah, I don't find it credible. I know, I know Bobby Kennedy Jr. He knows better. Mm. And I don't, I, I've been supportive of him uh, in, as a candidate who can actually open up space to discuss issues that are frozen out by an undemocratic Democratic Party. Um, and I don't think this is credible. He knows that Roger Waters is the world's most famous supporter of liberating Palestinians from open air prisons like the Gaza Strip, hideous refugee camps like, the, like Sabra and Shatila, and 70 plus years of continuous ethnic cleansing. He has to know that. Roger Waters actually never opposed COVID mandates, so I don't even know what he's talking about there. It appears with this walk back that he has fallen under pressure from one of the most powerful and undemocratic forces opposed to the First Amendment in the U.S., and that is the Israel lobby. And it feeds the perception when Bobby Kennedy Jr. marches in the Israel Day Parade with Shmuley Botia, a far-right former reality show race hustler whose entire salary is paid by the Likudnik Adelson family, that he's not actually an anti-establishment candidate, that he is uh, uh, fallen under the sway of far-right Likudnik oligarchs who favor bombing Iran. And this is troubling to the grassroots supporters, including the grassroots base of the Democratic Party that he's running in. For the first time, we've seen a Gallup poll show that more Democrats support Palestine over Israel. I mean, it's a bad way of framing the question, but it shows that he's out of step with the grassroots base and fuels the perception that the Israel lobby is even controlling this outsider campaign. Hmm. Joel, how would you respond to that? Sure. I mean, Robbie, first and foremost, I agree with Max that it's not credible. Uh, I think Bobby Kennedy clearly was backtracking on a position that he was fully aware of uh, regarding Roger Waters and Waters' anti-Semitism and uh, support for uh, positions on Israel that uh, ran, run antithetical, quite frankly, to human rights. Uh, he's talking about displacing uh, Jews from the state of Israel in order to achieve peace. That's not peace. That's uh, a humanitarian crisis that he's advocating for. 
And, and I think also it's very important to note that Bobby Kennedy's family history and the Kennedy family history in support of Israel and, and uh, Jewish self-determination is real. I, I actually think uh, at some point, though, we do have to listen to the candidate and maybe it's uh, uh, a, a change uh, from the tweet. But I actually think he was sincere in his position. I think it was strong that he said he supports uh, human rights and, and, and peace for the Palestinians, a state for Palestine, uh, uh, quite frankly, uh, as well within that. And, uh, you know, he, he's not credible in the backtrack, but I think we have to look at the voice and the voice is saying something eminently reasonable. And it's pointing out the Roger Waters and what Waters is saying and how he's doing it. Uh, not only is offensive, but even the, the German Jewish community uh, found it deeply anti-Semitic. Uh, he's up there shooting uh, pig balloons with stars of David on it. Uh, nobody uh, can argue that that's nothing but uh, adding fuel to the fire of, of hatred of Jews. Max, well, I want you to weigh in on the idea of the underlying substance of what Roger Waters is doing at his concert. Is it, in fact, uh, anti-Semitic, as Rabbi Shmuley characterized uh, it on Twitter? I just want to read this quote into the record. Uh, Rabbi Shmuley tweeted out a picture of himself with RFK Jr. over the weekend, saying, Bobby told me he had no idea that Waters was a vicious anti-Semite, and when he studied the issue and the facts, he immediately deleted the tweet, I believe Bobby, and I thank him for his repudiation of Waters. What do you make of that characterization of, uh, of, of Roger Waters? Well, it, it's amazing to see someone as forceful and brave on so many issues as Bobby Kennedy Jr. allowing a discredited race hustler like Shmuley Botiak to put words in his mouth. Um, and it really emphasizes how powerful the Israel lobby is. Uh, but to the point about Roger Waters, he's performing The Wall. This is a 43-year-old rock film that is possibly the most famous rock film in history. And what he's performing there in his concerts, which he has been doing across the United States with no complaint, is mocking a fascist demagogue. He's paying tribute to Anne Frank in his performances. The problem for the Israel apartheid lobby is that he's also paying tribute to Shireen Abu Akleh, the journalist who was killed in the line of fire deliberately, apparently, by Israeli forces. And they cannot allow a universal interpretation of the Holocaust to include all people. So they have to demonize Roger Waters and show how unhip and uncool and out of it they are, that they don't even know what the wall is. Um, and I, I really feel sorry for, for Bobby Kennedy Jr. to be wrapped up in this and to allow himself to become kind of a hostage. So I want to extend an invitation to Bobby. If you can suffer through the likes of Crystal Ball lecturing you on the science, then you could join me live at the Gray Zone for an open and civil discussion about what I've witnessed for years reporting from behind the Israeli apartheid walls around the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. And let's talk about this issue openly. Let's talk about the ethno-supremacist ideology and the settler colonists injected into the heart of historic Palestine in an open way, because that's what your supporters want. Joel, do you not recognize any part of what Roger Waters is doing as satire? Well, uh, first of all, uh, regarding Pink Floyd, uh, it's not very hip. It's it's uh, from my generation. I, I'd like to think maybe I'm hip at some level, but it, it's it's pretty pretty old music. And, and I I do see satire. And, then why level, aren't you familiar you know, pretty, with it? Pretty, pretty, <laughs> I'm extraordinarily familiar with it. What I'm not uh, uh, comfortable with in any way, shape, or form. And I was in Germany recently talking about anti-Semitism uh, in Germany uh, using Nazi symbology. Uh, using a pig with a Star of David on it and then shooting it down. Uh, I think it, it, it's pretty clear that when the Jewish community that's in the location where that concert is taking place says, this is offensive, we don't like this, this helps uh, uh, promote extremism, you got to kind of take them at their word. But Joel, uh, and why, let, let why me push why back must, Wait, wait, wait. What, well, the pig also we contains have... the cross and the Islamic crescent on it, and it's a, and, and Roger Waters is not shooting it. The, um, and the, I don't think this, it's, it's, this, it's, it's, it's a representation it, it, of the, organized the religion. Of Ro the Go context ahead, of Roger control. Waters is uh, in, on Israel. The context of Roger Waters in Israel is very clear. He opposes the state of Israel's existence. He wants to do boycotts. As a Jewish uh, exclusivist and state. I, and, and Max, you know what? I'm a strong supporter of peace between Israel and the Palestinians that have been for decades. And uh, I think that we should get there. I actually think if the Israeli street was calling for boycotts like there was in South Africa and the, the, 
hundreds of thousands of protesters protesting for democracy right now. If that's what they're calling for, I think you would see an elevated call for it as well here uh, in the United States. But they're not. Uh, his position is not about supporting peace. His position is about eliminating the state of Israel. And that, quite frankly, is a, a pretty important but context when looking at what he's doing with the pigs. Let's, let's, let me raise this one question, though, because I think this is important. So many leftists have been going back and yeah. forth about the two uh, non-Biden candidates that are in the race, Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. Marianne Williamson came under fire from some statements supportive of a two-state solution because it does seem that there has been some shift, a, a shift where there's a recognition that because of the territorial realities that exist today, there is not enough left for there to be an independent, uh, contiguous uh, Palestinian state, which leads people to ask what kind of one single state is equitable and not an apartheid state and doesn't have e unequal laws for Jewish citizens versus non-Jewish citizens. And so when people, Joel, make the argument that, as you've said, Israel should not exist, another person would characterize that, as Max has done, as that there should be a state, whatever it's called, Israel or what have you, but that doesn't make uh, Jew your status as a Jewish person endow, endow, endow you with more rights than everybody else in the country in a way that is qu uh, currently unequally playing out for Palestinians and other non-Jews in Israel. So what do you make of that as a, as a, as a policy perspective? And do you think that is categorically yeah. anti-Semitic, yeah, yeah. Joel? Well, where I'm saying with categorically anti-Semitic is telling the Jewish people that the right to self-determination as an independent, sovereign people uh, does not belong to, to them or to us, that Jews uh, somehow should be singled out as not being allowed to have an independent state that is uh, Jewish in character uh, and a majority of Jewish citizens. That's part of Just a. like part white B, Christians to, in the to your, U.S. To, uh, to your, to your, to your question, violently demographically to your, to your, to your, well, let's uh, on in a minute, Max. To, to, getting, to getting to Bree's question, Max, uh, to, to Bree's question, you're absolutely right, Bree, without a doubt. This occupation is way past overdue. Uh, without a doubt, there needs to be a two-state solution. Without a doubt, the settlement enterprise has encroached upon Palestinian territories that are preventing a feasible, practical, physical separation that enables the Palestinians who want their own state to have their own state. And that's where a real fight, a real tension is right now inside of Israel. There's a real tension clearly in the United States where the majority of American Jews, we support uh, a peace process, a peace outcome. Uh, it's not, it's, uh, this government in Israel is not moving in that direction deeply problematic. But that doesn't mean that eliminating the state of Israel as a majority Jewish state must be the, the, the way to resolve it. And, and, and the point of history on this, when there was no state in between the, Israel, the Jews and the Palestinians before 1948, and they lived sort of under British mandate and with each other, there was constant civil war. Uh, th that is not a recipe for peace. What a recipe for peace is, is an actual agreement between the two sides. That's what we need to be fighting for, not eliminating one of the sides. We're going to have to go in a minute, but I want to give you the last word, Max. Well, it, it, Joel and I are extremely privileged American Jews who have two countries, thanks to Israel's settler colonial project, while Palest the Palestinians I met who are caged for the rest of their lives in the Gaza Strip have no country, and it's because they are not Jewish, and the state of Israel as it currently exists is dedicated to violently demographically engineering a Jewish demographic majority, something that no Jewish American would permit from white Christians in the United States. What Joel calls the destruction of Israel is actually yeah. the inclusion of Palestinians and a binational state with equality for all. That is what he's, he's equating democracy with destruction. So what does that say? about the character of the state of Israel? And what does it say about those who are attacking Roger Waters? It says they are fundamentally opposed to democracy and they support, in the, no, it they, in the words of Hakeem Jeffrey, they support Israel to, yeah, today, right. tomorrow, and forever. He was essentially citing George Wallace on segregation. Hmm. Well, fascinating project, exchange Hakeem between Jeffries between both of you in the spirit of Max Blumenthal, I invite both of you to continue this conversation on Bad Faith totally. Podcast, but we have to leave it it's there. Important. Thank you to thank you to both of you. We're rising after this.